Psalm 137 By the waters of Babylon, there we sat down and wept, when we remembered Zion. On the willows there we hung up our lyres, for there our captors required of us songs, and our tormentors mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget its skill. Let my tongue stick to the roof of my mouth, if I do not remember you, if I do not set Jerusalem above my highest joy. Remember, O Lord, against the Edomites the day of Jerusalem, how they said, Lay it bare, lay it bare, down to its foundations. O daughter of Babylon, doomed to be destroyed, blessed shall he be who repays you with what you have done to us. Blessed shall he be who takes your little ones and dashes them against the rock. As they sang the words of this psalm, the ancient people of God lamented their past sufferings at the hand of Babylon. They celebrated their loyalty to Jerusalem, the city that represented the promises of God to give his people their own land and to dwell among them. One of the remarkable virtues of the Bible is its earthy realism. Consider that the Bible talks about physical tears. We sat down and wept. The Bible does not summon you to a super-spiritual existence, asking you to wade stoically through life above the reach of pain and weeping. The Bible, rather, gives us categories and language by which to speak and pray our tears to God. How does this psalm do that? Rather shockingly, by praying for even the destruction of the babies of Israel's enemies, by demanding that the pain of those enemies would befall them instead. This does not sound like the teaching of a gentle Jesus, we might say, but this is actually deeply consoling. We are reminded that God does not look the other way when his people are afflicted. He defends them. Justice will prevail. Rights will be wronged. In a 1959 letter, C.S. Lewis wrote of the modern notion of a mild and gentle Jesus domesticated into softness and spinelessness. Gentle Jesus, my elbow! The most striking thing about our Lord is the union of great ferocity with extreme tenderness. So go on. You are on the right track now, getting to the real man behind all the plaster dolls that have been substituted for him. This is the appearance in human form of the God who made the tiger and the lamb, the avalanche and the rose. He'll frighten and puzzle you, but the real Christ can be loved and admired as the doll can't. The Bible is a real book about a real God who sent a real son to rescue real sinners from real evil. It is not a fairy book. The Bible is a book you can trust, for it reveals to us a God we can trust.